Hey everyone, I'm Ben from Humblefish, and this is why I drive a 2020 Subaru WX STI. Hey guys, I just pulled over. It's a beautiful day this evening. Um, it's about 85 degrees here in Southern California. And I wanted to talk about my Subaru WRX STI Limited. And yeah, let's get cracking. Okay guys, so let's start the review on the outside. Um, we'll start on actually the uh, driver's left side uh, wheel uh, front fender area. Uh, so as you can notice that these are gold rims with red calipers. Right here I have um, powder coated these rims gold. Um, they're the stock rims. Uh, I believe they're NK rims. Um, please put it down in the comments if they're not, but I believe they're NK rims uh, from the factory. I love the Y-shaped uh, spoke here. I love that the design. It's it's uh, it's got like an almost a semi deep dish effect, and I like that. Um, so that's why I wanted to keep these rims instead of um, getting new a new set of rims. Um, they're cross drilled rotors. Um, the problem is, uh, when they came from the factory, they were uh, black, but they had this ugly uh, machined silver thing um, going on. I'll, I'll put a picture on, but it's it was horrible, and I just didn't like it. It didn't really, it really didn't go with the car, honestly. I bought World Rally Blue because you know when you think STI, you think um, you know World Rally Blue, you think big wing and gold rims with uh, you know red or black calipers. 
and I always prefer the red calipers. Uh, the calipers were some a nasty acid uh, yellow or green or whatever it was. It just, I mean, it probably went with the black rims, but it just doesn't go with um, the gold. It just, it didn't, it didn't, you know, it didn't offset contrast properly. So I've had the rims painted uh, with the STI logo. They are six piston Brembo brakes on the front, and I believe they're two piston in the back. Uh, please put it down in the comments if uh, if you guys uh, know if it's four, but I think it's two piston in the back, but they're six piston in the front. These are Michelin Pilot uh, Sport Cup 2 tires. They're a fantastic tire. Um, just, you know, hugs the road. Uh, again, I don't have to go into detail because I'm sure you guys know about this tire. It's fantastic. Uh, moving on. Um, there's only a few mods that I've ever done, that I've ever, sorry, that I've done to this car so far. Uh, the mods are a nameless axleback uh, exhaust, which is fantastic for the money. Um, and I'll talk about that in a second. And um, RCE Yellow's lowering springs. And I don't know if you can see that here um, through, the, through the wheels. Um, let me go on this side. Maybe you can see it over here. Um, but they drop. They drop the, uh, no, you can't see it from here, but they drop the um, car about uh, 0.76 inches, I think, less than, a, less than an inch. And that's all I really wanted because, you know, you've got a, you get a good gap with that. Um, you know, I guess, you know, the, the two finger test, I guess, you know, it fills out the hole and it just, it just looks a lot better. And of course, it's more planted. Um, I feel the car, um, you know, rides like rails, you know, it's really nice. Um, of course, the ride is stiffer, but I mean, that's a price you pay for good handling. So. Um, so those are the only two mods that are uh, aftermarket mods that I put on this car. Other than that, the car is bone stock um, with factory add-ons, of course. And I'll talk. I'll get to the factory add-ons in a second. Um, other than that, I love the lines of this car. It's very aggressive. It's got um, you know uh, flared fenders. Um, these are 19 uh, by eight and a half inch wheels. Um, I would have liked it a little wider, maybe nine or nine and a half. Um, because I do like that poke effect, but I'm not gonna play with spacers, so <laughs> let it be the way it is now. It just, you know, the, the wheels are pretty well filled out. Okay guys, so let's move on to some of the vinyls that I have on my car. So uh, I don't know if you noticed, but I've got uh, Bible scriptures all over my car. I got one there, one there, um, because I'm a Christian and um, I believe in Jesus Christ, who's my Lord and Savior. And I love to represent these Bible scriptures out here. And another thing I'm really, really, really proud to have and happy to show in my car is the fact that I'm so blessed to live in the greatest country in the world, the United States of America. And um, I have the US flag on both sides of my car as well as my God Bless America um, a vinyl here, a decal here. So yeah, I'm so blessed to have that uh, and I'm so proud to have that uh, those decals on my car. Um, some other decals that I have are the, um, this is a kind of a, a joke one. I really like this <laughs> endangered species for all you manual lovers out there. This is cool. I've got the Subaru ones up there. I've got the STI um, decals here. Now this is actually on the um, 2004 STI with the, uh, I think it's on the fog light covers, but I really wanted to put it on, on both sides of the wing. So it's, it's right there. Um, and uh, I've got the running joke on here, uh, 25B. I know Subaru haven't, hasn't made one yet, and so I thought I'd put my spin on uh, when I build this car to make it what Subaru would have, you know, uh, perhaps released, in at least in my opinion. Um, so yeah, I've got the 25B vinyl out there. Um, I've also got, um, so you can see, um, this is not real carbon fiber, it's just a wrap. Um, I do love that the Type RA and the S209 come with real carbon fiber roofs. I just love the look of that, so I just got the wrap. Um, you can see I have the Limited, so I have the moonroof. Um, <coughs> Vinyl Labs, who wrapped it, has did a great job. Um, you can check them out on my Instagram. Um, I've also wrapped the, um, the antenna, and also I've wrapped the top part of my wing. So I like that kind of clean wrapped look. Um, kind of a hybrid carbon fiber thing going on. I've also got a lot of pinstripes here. As you can see um, at the bottom, uh, both sides on the mirrors. Um, I've got pinstripes um, down here on the bumper, rear bumper, and also on the exhaust. I've got pinstripes in there. Um, and uh, some more carbon fiber bits here. Uh, these are all wraps, and there's another carbon fiber fender inlet here. Um, so I just, I'm kind of mixing up the pinstripe carbon fiber theme. Um, I've got a uh, pinstripe up here. Now, I, the way I did this, I really, um, I like to wrap it all the way around. You can see 
for me this looks kind of full before uh, I think a lot of the cars have just the bottom lip portion of that uh, pinstripe but I kind of went all around um, thought that's kind of neat um, so I'm doing the pinstripe carbon fiber theme I guess the red with the carbon fiber um, cool thing here is I don't know if this camera can pick it up but the STI for 2020 is cherry blossom pink so I find that really cool it's like a throwback to the uh, STIs of old um, same deal here it's a uh, it's kind of pinkish um, and also uh, it's pinkish on the or pinkish really cherry blossom here too so it's really cool that that this is um they kind of went back to this look um speaking of tail lights um i went out with the blacked out tail lights they're they're vinyl covers again um, because i really like the look this look here it looks really aggressive if you look at both of them together but the problem is later on I just i like this part being red but this is all wrap so what i'm thinking is when the vinyl kind of wears out i might just rip it off and get a subi speed v2 tail lights so um, i'm really liking that um, other than that, those are the wraps that I have. Of course, I have wraps and decals, and of course I have the Subaru decal uh, back here as well. So, um, yeah, so that's it for the decals. Oh, I forgot to mention, uh, these are kind of like a foreshadowing. Um, I haven't done anything with IG and Cobb yet, but I do want to, because um, I'm planning on getting the Cobb uh, Stage 3 Flex Fuel Kit and the IG AOS and a bunch of other stuff later on when I do modify the performance of this car. But that's going to be in another video to follow. However, I thought I'll have a, uh, you know, uh, I guess a foreshadowing there. Maybe I'll add an AEM sticker <laughs> up here. So yeah, that's that's about it uh, for my for the wraps and the decals. So I'm going to start at the front of the car. Um, and since we talked about the wheels and the wrap decal mods that I have, um, I thought it's probably good to talk about the lights too. These are STI blacked out lights. And these lights turn with the steering wheel. So that means that, um, and they're HIDs. So whenever they're on and the steering wheel turns, um, these turn with it. And they're really great for night vision. Um, uh, for, you know, when you want to see around corners and stuff in the night when the, the roads are poorly lit. Um, and I also love the blacked out look. The front really, to me, looks very aggressive. And I, just, I really love it. Um, it's just got that mean look, you know, the stance. Okay, so I want to talk about the, uh, a bit about the, uh, the fog lights there. Um, or the lack of really um, and um, instead in, for 2020 all new we have two um, air intakes you can see here um, I think they cool the the brakes is what I think they do I mean if you guys know please feel free to comment down there um, so the JDM versions actually have a fog light but because we have the uh, the, the the auto direction lights I talked to you about where the steering wheel turns and then the lights turn they, that's what I heard that they don't include the fog lights here but um, so in America we don't have the fog lights um, in the STIs here but uh, in Japan they do they sell it and uh, they come with the uh, fog light here so basically uh, what I'm thinking is maybe to buy that I think Subi Speed sells them and I've seen they're quite pricey but I think they'll just add that you know just just an extra you know stock look to an already modified car so or will be modified okay so moving on um, I do have a license plate parent license plate relocator um, I just think that just looked way better than the stock one I do have uh, the OEM body kit that came with uh, the STI um, uh, this is uh, quite expensive it's about two thousand dollars but uh, when I talk about how I got this car um, I'll talk about how Subaru of America kind of helped with that um, uh, so basically this has the front lip as you can see here um, it adds that even more aggression to the front end um, it has the side skirts um, it's not that visible but you know it still adds to it it has the rear valances the rear quarter valances and then the the, the uh, this is the stock diffuser so I mean it's it's not as crazy as you know something aftermarket like a I don't know I, I've seen veil side kits that are very out there I mean you can buy wide body kits and stuff but for an OEM kit it just has that clean look and that's kind of what I was looking for kind of wanted to keep the car as stock looking as possible while modifying just bits like the rims um, again uh, I really wish that Subaru came with the gold rims and the red calipers um, stock um, but I mean, I have my thoughts on that on my rant. I'll talk about more as to why I think that they don't. I mean, it's just my personal opinion, but um, it's um, I kind of had to purchase that on my own. 
So yeah, that, that should be it for the outside. It's a very, very aggressive looking car to me. I love the mean hood scoop. And the only thing is it's a little smaller in, the, in these, uh, I think they're VA STIs, but the, the earlier models, especially the, the one in 20, two, sorry, 2004, they had a bigger scoop and just had that more of an aggression. But still, this looks really mean, um, really nice. The front end is super, super aggressive. Um, I love the body lines, um, you know, the flared fenders. Um, the rear taillights are, they're good, they're nice, they're just, I've seen better. Um, but again, I mean, you know, with the Subi Speed taillights I want to buy, and even with the vinyl decal I did, it kind of, kind of corrects it a little bit. I just feel like it's a little plain, and it kind of resembles that, uh, the last gen Impreza where this is actually based off of. Um, and another quick thing I want to do is, uh, I want to add an F1 light down here. Um, again, they came stock, I think, overseas, um, but I want to add that. And just speaking of uh, how this car was sold overseas, another thing that we missed out here is um, this car overseas, I think in Australia, perhaps New Zealand, but Japan for sure I think has the, uh, the cameras on the side mirror and the front. And I really wish uh, that they were, they were sold here with that because um, it just helps, um, you know, you don't go over, when a car is low, especially when this car is a little bit lowered, it's easy to kind of go over curbs and stuff. You can already see I've damaged this over here. I do have another uh, similar bumper from my 2018 STI I'm gonna swap on here, but I mean, things like that can be avoided. I think the, the front camera went here. But other than that, that was that's really it. Um, yeah, let's, talk, let's go inside and look uh, at the STI from an inside review point of view. One more look outside there. Really great looking car. I love the wing. I do wanna add one quick thing here. Um, Everybody, some people, uh, you know, can get this without a wing here. You can get the wing delete. I honestly think that it's just a personal preference, but without the wing, it just looks naked to me. Um, I just think that it's a lot better to have the wing, at least, you know, on the car. Um, it just gives that more, I mean, yes, it adds some downforce when you're on the track, um, but it just looks a lot nicer and it just, just gives that like, yeah, it's boy racer, but it gives that, um, here's an STI, you know, look, because it's just all about legacy for these cars, the Evo, the STI, you know? So yeah, uh, let's go in and, and look inside. Okay, so let's start the inside review by looking at the key. Uh, the key is a very, very nice, um, sleek looking unit. Um, it's got a good weight to it. Um, it's, you know, fits nicely in your pocket, it's smooth. Um, it's got like a brushed aluminum feel here. And, um, and it's, uh, and it's got a couple of buttons. It's got a lock. Uh, this one is unlocked, the Subaru one. Um, and uh, trunk release and your panic button. But uh, other than that, it stays in the pocket. Okay, so um, sitting in the car, car's off. Um, it's kind of hot in here. <laughs> um, it's about um, 85 degrees outside, so um, hopefully I won't have to turn the AC on, but uh, let's see how it goes. So inside, you're greeted with a nice leather wrapped steering wheel. Um, it's got a D shape, which is really nice, uh, very sporty looking. Um, it's got the SDI look. I think that the, the, the earlier editions of the VA series had um, like an aluminum, aluminum uh, looking uh, piece here, but this is nice. They put like a piano black material after 2018, which, uh, which also uh, mirrors here. You have a piano black accents all over, all over here, all over here. Now the S209, this is red with S2 9 written there, and uh, that's a really nice looking piece. I wish they had something like that for the SDI, but the piano black really works. Um, other than that, um, uh, it's got a nice uh, 9 and 3 grip. Um, it's got your uh, cruise control on here. This is not radar cruise control or anything, just regular cruise control. Um, it's got your uh, um, source, Bluetooth, um, volume knobs, uh, your Siri, if you have uh, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, uh, or Siri for Apple CarPlay, sorry. Um, and your, your phone buttons here. Um, the deck is, uh, is uh, all new for 2019. And above, so 2020 gets the updated deck. It's got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. It's got the new version of Starlink. It's a lot slicker. I had the, on the 2018. It was so bad. It was like, it was like one of those like old computers trying to play a computer game, and then the graphics were just like freezing, and that's kind of what it was. It was just horrible. And I'm so glad they updated it. I mean, um, it's it's you know the, the interior is, is is nice enough as it is. It's not a luxury car, um, but you know it's everything you need. And that's that's all that matters. Um, it's a functional interior, as with Subaru. All um, uh, you know, it's a great visibility all the way around. Um, that wing really doesn't bother me, as you can see in the rearview mirror. 
it, it actually fits in, in within that space, so it's not like it's uh, blocking my vision or anything. Um, let's give it a quick start. Oh, actually, before that, I do want to show the seats. These are Recaro seats, um, and they're nicely bolstered here. However, down here, um, the bolstering isn't that great like in an Evo or even a Civic Type R, but over here, the bolstering is really thick. So, I, I mean, there's a little knock on that. I wish Subaru would... Um, you know, give the same bolstering as it is here or there. I mean, this is, uh, of course, a, um, a performance car, so it should have that kind of seating. Um, STI embossed here, red seat belts, you know, because you go faster with red seat belts, haha, <laughs> right? Um, even in the back, you get red seat belts. I mean, the back in the back room, um, uh, back room, sorry, the uh, the room in the back there is pretty good. I mean, it is based off the previous generation Impreza. It's quite spacey for what it is. Um, the trunk is also spacey. I can show that in a, in a second. Um, other than that, you've got um, um, everything else that a driver focused uh, car needs. So, and, and this is one of the best things I bought this car is right here. You can see three nice sport pedals here. And that means it's a manual gearbox. And that is exactly why I bought it. One of the reasons. So put that in neutral, pl neutral plus a clutch, clutch in. This is a, uh, where's the start bu stop button? Um, uh, this is a black one. Now in Japan, they have a red one and I, I think you can buy them and I would love to do that because this looks all that more sportier. But anyway, let's press it and it springs to life. Dow or my... So as it comes to life, you can see the gauges here. Very clean, very clean. Um, it is an analog setup, and I do love that. None of this, um, I mean, now, I do appreciate the new uh, digital gauges, and, you know, Audi has, um, you know, the uh, the Google Maps and everything in there. It's great to have all that, but, again, it's a lot of fluff that you don't really need, right? Um, this is everything that uh, you need to look at right away. You've got a nice big uh, speedometer here. Uh, goes all the way to 180 miles an hour. Um, not that, you know, you should go that fast. <laughs> Um, unless you're on a track um, and uh, you know your fuel gauges you've got a nice um, big tachometer here and with that nameless exhaust it just sounds beautiful that boxer rumble is amplified another reason I bought this car um, I keep saying that I'll probably you'll probably hear me say that several times <laughs> when I think of reasons uh, you got your um, temperature gauge there um, this is a small you do have a small multifunction this functional display and uh, how that works uh, you can see you've got your uh, speedometer here, you've got your SI drive, which I'll talk about in a second, and you've got, um, uh, I believe this is a trip meter, but um, again, um, put your comments there if, if this is some, that's something else. You've got your miles per gallon there. Um, How economical your driving is what I'm trying to say, uh, in real time. Now again, this car gets about 17 miles to the gallon. You don't, I mean, people are... <laughs> People are saying, oh, uh, you know, I'm just ranting here a little bit on this just because we talked about miles per gallon. People do say that the box EJ is a very, very, um, you know, une uneconomical, if that's a word. Okay, so let's talk about SI drive. Um, so SI drive, um, it controls your throttle. Um, so you can have uh, sport, which is kind of what's standard there. You can also have intelligent and which is, which quote unquote saves fuel. Um, and it's more of a smoother throttle response and you can have sport sharp which is more happy on the throttle and you can see that in the SI map here you can see that um, uh, intelligent has more of a linear curve on that graph there um, then you can see uh, sport has a little bit of a sharper, sharper curve and then sport sharp is pretty much your on off throttle here um, and then you have your center differential uh, your, your, um, you can control how much power goes to the front and the back and yet another reason I purchased this car is because uh, I love all-wheel drive systems the rear bias um, unlike I think the Volkswagen has a front bias when the Golf R but the rear bias this one is a 41% uh, the power to the front 59 to the back um, which I like you can also you, so you can set that here in this in the center diff screen you can set uh, you can put it into manual and you can set how much power you want uh, in your diff or you can leave it on auto and you can still let the computer uh, send uh, a rear or front bias so you can sit to the front to the back I probably would do this setup for the track but for the street I just leave it in auto um, and I don't want to mess with anything else there so I mean it's great that you have this much control another cool thing is you have um, automatic climate control and you have um, dual uh, uh, dual um, what do you call it? two zone climate so that's really really cool that you can have that um, and especially in a car that, you know, luxuries aren't really its uh, priority. So that's really cool to have. 
um, bright big hazard button there. Um, that's about it. Oh, we do have heated seats here, as you can see. There are heated seats. Where's that? There we go. Behind, so you can turn that on and off. Um, the cover here, uh, not much of space there. You've got your uh, USB cable that powers um, your Apple CarPlay Android Auto on your phone. And uh, this is a, uh, so this is another option that I got is a the uh, STI a short throw. Um, so this is from the factory. It's a shorter throw than the standard STI shifter. Um, but again, if I went with something like Car Boy, um, it could be even tighter than that. But other than that, that's uh, pretty much it. Um, oh, one more thing. I've got a, uh, this is an option as well. It's a digital compass and auto dimming rear view mirror. Um, that's kind of cool there too. Subaru Starlink has SOS uh, capability there. Um, and, you know, a power uh, moonroof. Tilts and slide. So, I could have really done without the moonroof, although I, I do enjoy that I can sometimes throw this open and get let the cabin have some more light. Um, vanity mirrors. Again, everything you need, nothing extra, and it's a driver-focused um, automobile. So, let's step outside again for a little bit. Okay, so the step and height is really good. Um, and uh, it's really comfortable and it's really easy to get in. Uh, I'm about 5'9", and um, I have plenty of room, plenty of leg room. Um, the pedals are really, really good, close together, clutch, brake, um, can do heel toe. Heel toe is a little challenging though, but with the, especially with this car. And, um, but you know, rev match downshift, everything is right there. Um, it's a really driver's uh, central focused feel. And, uh, and I've got a good amount of headroom, good amount of leg room. Um, just really a nice place to be as a driver. You've got your, your uh, analog gauges here, your boost gauge up there, shifter here. It's a very nice place to be. All right, now getting in the back is just as easy. Um, got a good uh, kind of step in space here, as you can see. So there's good leg room I have right here. I would say a couple of inches at least. Um, I'm sitting behind where I would sit uh, in front, uh, behind myself, I guess. Um, good headroom here. Um, for me, I mean, I think if you're um, if you're six foot, it might be if you're over six foot. Sorry, uh, you might be um, or six feet rather. You might be uh, having some headroom issues, but on the most part, it is pretty spacious back here. Um, I'm gonna scoot over and show you with the seat all up. This is the seat, the front seat pushed all the way up and the recline just a little bit. There's ample leg room right here. So um, I mean, you have a, a really really spacious. Uh, Back seat, the center seat is also good. You kind of have to straddle the front, I'm in the middle, sorry. Um, and you can put car seats in here. There are tethers for car seats right here and hooks. Um, and uh, I've got two kids, so I've put their, uh, their car seats in and it holds it really well. Uh, so it is uh, fully functional. Um, this is based on the previous generation Impreza. Um, uh, it's, so it's it's not as compact. Um, I would assume the older STIs would have been more compact. This is probably slightly bigger, but uh, it is totally usable for two adults in the back, three in a pinch, um, and car seats if you want to put car seats in here, in the back. So yeah, I'm really impressed with the with the uh, with the legroom headroom and the overall amount of space back here. Of course, uh, I mean we get our cool red seat belts. Um, there's no uh, nothing luxurious back here. There's no uh, vents back here. Um, you've got a dome light and that's about it. Maybe some coat, yeah, there's some coat hooks here. Um, your power window mirror, uh, power window, not mirrors, power window switches. Um, that's pretty much all you have. And oh, and there's a nice, um, there is a center rest here, center arm rest, I can pull it down. And it's got two cup holders, so that's really nice. And that's really about it. Uh, there's not much um, other than your uh, standard, you know, um, bench seat with seat belts. So we're gonna move in the trunk portion now, and it's a very usable trunk. Um, there are several ways to open the trunk. You can uh, press it with the uh, trunk unlock. There is a, on the fob, there is a uh, trunk popper inside, and there's also a popper up here. So you can see that. It's a little button right over here. You get to hit that and the key in the pocket, and it comes open. So I've got a few cool things here. I've got the cargo net, uh, the cargo floor, um, which is a 
uh, really solid there. It's rubbery and uh, so it prevents any kind of spills and whatnot getting on your uh, on the carpeting. Um, it is a very spacious trunk, as you can see. Um, and, and with the cargo net down, let's get that down here, you can see that it actually even has more room of an opening. So there's a really large opening here and I've put down the, uh, the cargo net. I've gone to Lowe's with this, um, take, uh, you know, uh, loaded tools up and, um, and the seats full flat, which I'll show in a second. Um, you've got, uh, I've got the Harman Kardon system, so I think that's a sub here and uh, speakers. Um, so let me just uh, open up the, or fold down the seats. Just flip one of these and it folds right down. And of course, uh, I'll have to remove, I'll have to remove the uh, headrest. So why don't I do that and then I'll just um, show the video once it's done. But it's very easy though. You open this and you fold it down. Same thing on the other side. You open this, fold it down. So that one goes all the way down. And you have a really flat floor. floor. So um, let me take off this headrest and then I'll, uh, I'll show what that looks like. Okay, with the headrest down, Fold it flat, let me take this out, put it there for now, and look at this. I mean, you've got a really, really, uh, really, really long and wide uh, cargo area in an STI, I mean, that's awesome. Um, I don't know how much the exact cubic feet is, um, I can check that and get back to you, but if you guys know, you can post in the comments. Um, but yeah, this is really wide. I mean, you can probably fit a TV in there, a large flat screen TV, and is very, very usable backspace. Yeah, so basically the STI is a really, really usable sports sedan. You can uh, daily drive it, you can haul stuff in it, and you can have fun on the track um, all at the same time. So it is a very, very, very cool and usable car. Okay, to open the hood, uh, there's a hood latch down here. Just pull it. And these are always a little tricky, but there is a lever down here somewhere. There you go, you can see it right here. Uh, just flip that tab and it should come right up. And I love that I don't have to prop it with, with um, uh, hood uh, struts or anything like that. It just kind of um, uh, goes up on its own and stays there, which is great. And there's a huge intake um, for the intercooler, uh, the top mount intercooler. Um, this is the EJ257 uh, motor, um, horizontally opposed, makes 310 horsepower and 290 foot-pounds of torque. Um, at the crank. Okay guys, we're gonna start the uh, driving portion of this video. Um, I've got my keys in the pocket uh, since it is push button start. Got the clutch in, into neutral, shift right here, and she fires right up. All right, let's get this on here. I be. And make sure I've got, so this has got Apple CarPlay Android Auto, and I've got my destination fired up here. I love the fact that this is a manual parking brake. It is so much, I don't know, just more raw feeling than the electric parking brakes of most cars these days. So um, let's get going. I'm gonna focus a bit on the uh, acceleration, handling, and just general behavior of this vehicle. Um, first thing I'd like to do is start on the um, uh, SI drive, and now I spoke about the SI drive controls two major components. One is the the first component it controls is the uh, the center diff, where we can send power to the front or the rear of this car since it's an all-wheel drive vehicle. Um, it has uh, I love the fact that it's a rear bias all-wheel drive system. I believe it's 41% of the power to the front, 59% to the back, and that's always best for uh, sport driving, quote unquote. Um, but now I'm going to focus uh, on the other portion of SI Drive, which is a throttle mapping. And we have three modes here. We have Intelligent, Sport, and Sport Sharp. So for Intelligent, um, it's more like a, a linear throttle, as I explained earlier. It's a quote-unquote fuel saving, although the mission of this car is generally not to save fuel. Um, it's just a performance car. Sport is your standard driving uh, mode. Um, and we have Sport Sharp, which I want to go to. And it's uh, pretty much your on-off throttle, but um, it's fun. <laughs> so as we go here, I mean, as soon as boost kicks in, I mean, this thing takes off. It's just not a joke here. Um, however, it's very snappy on the throttle in Sport Sharp. 
and it just it, the thing just goes, man. It's uh, it's almost like a Dr. Jekyll, um, Dr. Jekyll, sorry, Jekyll and Hyde feel um, that's going on over here. So that's really cool that that's the case. I do love that old, uh, the old school, you know, uh, nothing, 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 then boom, you know, you got a brush of power. Um, I owned, um, it's almost like the VTEC motors of old. I owned an Acura Integra Type R many years ago, and it's a similar thing. I mean, when, you know, you hit, I think it was like 5,700 or 5,800 RPM, the, the thing revved to like 8,500. Uh, 5,700, 5,800 uh, 5, RPM, you know, the second cam kicks in and boom, you know, you just get like this rush of power. But before that, it's pretty much nothing. Now, this is not like that, uh, although it does have that same characteristic. Um, it has a two and a half liter engine as opposed to the EJ20. So it has a little bit more torque. I mean, a little bit more power for city driving and putting around the city. Um, however, once uh, I, I believe boost kicks in around three or three and a half thousand RPM. And then, I mean, yeah, it just, it just goes. Woo. <laughs> And it's just it's just a joy it's a dream to drive people complain about the ej motor being old and i just touched on it a little earlier about how it's oh i'm you know what am i getting right now 17.6 miles to the gallon i mean um yeah i mean my honda pilot gets uh a more fuel uh, i mean sorry better fuel economy than this but i mean you know this is a pretty much 90s engine you know uh, wrapped around in a 20, 20, uh, 2020 um, body, sh you know, body or shell, or with, you know, with safety airbags and everything like that. But it's pretty much 90s internals, and I just, I just really enjoy that. Um, you know, it's just raw feeling. You got hydraulic steering, you got a real clutch pedal, you got six-speed manual, short throw gearbox, uh, a manual e-brake, um, <clears throat> and people say quote-unquote ancient engine, but um, you know. An engine that's really not focusing on fuel savings, but giving you the most enjoyment. Um, you can hear everything. You can hear the turbo whistles. I do wish I could hear more of the more because I do like that. Um, now, when I modify the car, I put a Cobb SF intake and stuff. I can hear more. But um, I mean, yeah, it's a gimmick. But I mean, I'm a '90s kid. I love that '90s JDM feel. Um, you know, uh, that whole sound. You know, the the raw engine and the the, the turbo noises and. Um, uh, you know, and this one, this has the obviously the EJ. One of the red. I, I, this, this, I, I understand this is going to be the one of the last EJ motors. Um, oh, sorry, the last EJ series because I, I'm hearing reports. I'm seeing reports online that the next SDI is going to be FA24, and that's not going to have the unequal left headers, which make you know, which contribute to the um, the boxer rumble. So. Um, it's 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 real it's really sad i understand why they're doing it you know for efficiency and it's a modern engine but i mean this this thing is like you know it takes you back to the 90s and in 2020 comfort and i say comfort loosely because this is not a luxury car but it has all the creature comforts you need i mean once they put apple carplay android auto uh, i think 20 starting the year 2019 they were late to the game no doubt but but at least it's there, and now it brings the cabin up to 2020, right? Um, you know, you have all you you have you really have all you need. Um, it's just a it's a recipe for success in a in a raw analog performance car, and I believe it's one of the last ones on sale today that you can get. You know, uh, I believe this is the last, I guess, all-wheel drive turbo performance manual raw sedan you can find uh, on sale today. Um, so you know, snap it up before it's gone, man, because next iteration i mean uh, i think they're they're talking about the next one now and it's probably going to be more refined it's probably going to go that golf r route and man the golf r route is like it's like i mean it's okay but uh, no hate for that i mean it's fine it's a, it's, a, it's a fine automobile but it's just refined man it's not raw it's not it's not a to me it's not a driver's car you know like it's it's just gotta it doesn't it doesn't check those boxes you know a fully quote unquote manual feel um, I'm gonna go get to a couple of bends and I'll kind of talk about, um, you know, how handling uh, really works in this car. I mean, it is like, it's just right. I mean, first of all, these these uh, these tires are uh, Michelin Pilot uh, Sport Cup Two tires. Um, they grip like anything, you know. Um, and the car feels like it's riding on rails, um, and um, it's just. The, the SDI already comes with a really fantastic suspension out of the box, um, but um, this car, especially, I've, 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 I've modified it a little bit. I put on a, a RCE uh, yellows lowering springs. It drops the 
uh, the ride height to I believe about 0.76 inches, so less than an inch. Um, it, it just enough to fill the gap uh, of the wheel and give it like even a tighter suspension. And I, and I can feel that the ride is, you know, yes, it's a lot stiffer. That's not the purpose of this of this car um, for comfort, um, but it does, you know, it does hug the curves more. It gives that raw performance that uh, that I was looking for. This car's mission and purpose. While I mean, yeah, it could be a it could be a really good um, you could make long distance drives in this car. You could do, um, you know, you could do, you know, road trips. But it, that's not the mission of this car because I mean, while it's 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 quite comfortable, I wouldn't want to be in this car for you know six to eight hours because it is it's stiff. It, you know, it's it's not friendly. It's um, it's it's meant for the back roads. Um, you know, when you're having a nice uh, drive, you know, um, and but definitely it's meant for the track, right? Uh, more than that, it's meant for the track, um, and you know, it's got just enough creature comforts to keep you happy on a daily commute, but it's something that's not really um, meant for the long distance drive. Uh, the gear, the gear shift is very, very short throw, has very short throws, um, I believe. I've got the STI short throw kit. Um, when I say short throws, like I owned a Mazda RX-8 before, that car had a lot shorter shorter throws I felt out of the factory. I mean, it, the shifter was first of all like this big, um, and it was like a very, you know, almost like Miata feel I would assume, right? I haven't driven a Miata yet, but I would assume that's what I would feel like. So the throws are very short for for what it is. So if I throw a Carpoy short shift kit on here, it would probably solve that, you know, give me even shorter throws, prob possibly to mimic the RX-8 slash Miata feel. Um, but again, it's not one of my, it's not on my priority list. I've got other things I want to do this car, um, you know, to get that power out. The interior is very comfortable to be in. You know, you've got a great nine and three grip. The, the, it's a, it's a D-shaped steering wheel. Um, and, you know, um, you've got all the essentials that you really need. Nothing extra, but everything that you just really need for, um, for your performance driving. Um, all the controls are great like you've got the cool thing is you've got dual zone climate control and that's really cool it's kind of a luxury feature in this car you've got heated seats and there are Recaro seats um, you've got you know your your updated Starlink deck um, with TomTom -Tom navigation um, I think it's TomTom -Tom. and you've got um, Apple CarPlay Android Auto um, you've got a really nice 5.9 5 inch screen I believe up there it's got a really big boost gauge um, so I wouldn't have to although I do like the 90s feel of those uh, those gauge pods. Um, this actually has a big boost gauge up here, um, and uh, you know it's got up some other information as well, like uh, your angle of uh, of how of height that the, the car. If you're tra driving up uh, steep inclines, um, it's got your your you know fuel gauges, get fuel gauge meters, and and fuel computers and all that kind of stuff. So it's pretty cool. There's a lot of cool stuff in here. Um, another thing I like as I'm pulling into this gas station is. Um, the gas tank is on the right side. Now, I'm, now I, I assume that's because this car was built in Japan, and in Japan, you know, it's a, it's a right-hand drive country, or cars drive on the uh, cars have right-hand drive in Japan, or are right-hand drive in Japan. So I was thinking that's probably why they built um, they built the uh, when they built a the shell, they probably put the the gas cap on the right. Woo! That is a tough suspension. I just felt that right up my bones, man. Okay, here we go. This is a very tight corner for an on-ramp, and that handling is so, so sharp. Oh, yeah. Woo. That right there, that like two to three seconds of enjoyment is... If, if if I didn't say anything in this video and I just put a clip of just that on-ramp um, uh, on-ramp portion and just my my expression you know with the with the tightness of the handling and then just that raw boxer rumble engine and the bypass valve releasing that air and then just rocket it into the next gear and then I'm just hanging on again hey, that that is why this car is special and that is one of the last one of the reasons I bought this car why this is one of the last cars that is a true manual a true uh, true manual meaning true analog driver's car it's just if I didn't say anything else but just show that portion I mean I hope you guys would understand why this car is special
it's just a beauty. It's a dream to drive. You want a driver's car, and today, in, at least in 2020, you it's very hard to find a true driver's car. Um, I think the STI is one of the last ones. This is why I bought it. A true analog car. I don't care if people call it a dinosaur. Who cares? So what? It's a dinosaur. Ooh. Like, I'm enjoying it every day. I'm, I'm, I'm rowing through the gears. I get to rev match, downshift, um, heel toe. I'm still trying to get good at that. Um, you know, and me on a track versus somebody in a, the new Supra, they might be faster than me. I mean, of course, stock. If I modified, then that might be a different story, or when I modified, hopefully. But if, if, if I take it stock for stock, the guy in the Supra will probably be lapping me, you know, um, at least on the straights taking over. But <laughs> I, I'm going to be having so much more fun, I would think. I don't care how, what journalists say. Oh, wow, it's great, man. Pop, pop, pop. I'm like, come on, man. Where's your third pedal? Where's your... Where's your, you know, are you, are you, are you really controlling the car? Are you really controlling? You're just controlling the steering and the brake and the and the momentum, um, but without controlling the gears, it's you're losing all that. And without uh, some sort of hydraulic steering, you lose a bit of, well, I don't know, considerable feedback with an electric steering setup. Um, I don't know what kind of car you can buy today. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for the review of my 2020 WRX STI Limited. Um, you know, it's a total blessing to own this car and I totally love it and I'm totally stoked to work on it more and increase the performance. Um, so if you guys are looking for the most analog car that you can buy on the market today, um, I believe that's the uh, STI and um, it is going to probably be the final year of the EJ motor and uh, next year it might be more refined. Uh, there's reports of that, the FA24 going in there and, and you know, um, so this is a true driver's car. Hopefully the six-speed manual will make it to the next uh, iteration but, you know, never know, right? So um, I guess this is this might go on sale for the 2021 year if they, they don't release a, the next one by then, um, by next year. So I mean, you can still go out and buy it. Um, I, I really suggest you do. It's a, if you're looking for that raw performance, you know, with a manual, um, all-wheel drive, turbocharged uh, performance sedan, and it's got a lot of aftermarket for it. So again, one more look at the car. It's kind of dirty. <laughs> I'm going to wash it this afternoon. Um, but yeah. Um, so uh, please like and subscribe uh, if you like this video and uh, and I'll be putting more content out soon I'm just getting the channel kicked off um, If you guys would like me to review any of your cars um, I'll put my email down as well in the links there or in another uh, part of the video here and uh, yeah um, Have a great day and uh, be blessed